I want to start this video off by going over a little story. So, in 2010, I actually wasn't really the biggest hockey fan. I was a 10 turning 11 year old kid. Actually, no, 9 turning 10. Right, my birthday is in the middle of the year, and I was born in 2000. So, in 2010, during the Vancouver Olympic Games, I wasn't actually really the biggest hockey fan. I started watching the sport a year later when the Canucks, my hometown team, went to the Stanley Cup Finals. However, even though hockey was kind of outside my knowledge realm of that time period in 2010, you just could not avoid ice hockey. There was a really big buzz going around in my community, my teachers, my friends, and my friends' families, all the people that I was around every single day at school. They were all just talking about, oh, the Winter Olympic Games, you know, you just go take a sky train and you're all of a sudden at Rogers Arena, you can watch the games, or if you want to get off a little bit earlier, you can stop up at the Richmond Olympic Oval and watch some speed skating, you can go up north to Whistler, do all the other events, or not do them, you're not doing them because you're not an Olympian, but you're watching them. There was a really big buzz going around in the city of Vancouver for the Olympics, but by far the biggest conversation that everybody was having was revolving around ice hockey. And for good reason, too. Guys like Sidney Crosby, guys like Niedermeyer, guys like Iginla and Martin Brodeur, just some absolute studs, all suiting up for Team Canada in a hometown Vancouver showcase, it was really giving the entire community something to cheer about. However, even though I wasn't really the biggest hockey fan back in 2010, I still do remember a few things that I was exposed to back then. Particularly, the fear, the anxiety, the aura of caution that a lot of the people in my community would display heading into what would have been the gold medal game. Now, up until this point, everybody was super stoked and they were all hyped up. Oh yeah, look at this. Team Canada is dominating. All these really good players doing their thing. They're scoring goals. It's in front of the hometown fans. It's amazing. But when it came to that gold medal game... There was some controversy as to the goaltending on Vancouver, or not Vancouver, but Canada's side, and there also was a really, really big spark of worry that arose from the opponent. Not because Team USA was absolutely game-shatteringly good and they were guaranteed the scoring an insane amount of goals and that Luongo or Brodeur, they would absolutely crack under pressure, Crosby wouldn't do his thing. No, that wasn't the worry there. The worry for a lot of the people in my community was that Team USA's goaltender, Ryan Miller, would show up and absolutely steal the show. And to be fair, this was a reputation that the Buffalo Sabres, starting at minder Ryan Miller at the time, built up for himself for good reason. In this year, in 2009-2010, he was the best goaltender in the entire NHL, winning the Vezina Trophy with a 9-2-9 save percentage and a 2-2-2 goals against in 69 games played. He almost had 70 games, and he had these numbers. He went 41-18-8 in the playoffs. He posted similar numbers even though he lost, and in the Olympic Games, in six games, Ryan Miller had a 9-4-6 save percentage, when 5-1-0, the one was the gold medal game, thank you, Jerome Ginla, Sidney Crosby, golden goal, but he had a 1-3-5 goals against in six games played as well. Ryan Miller was an absolute legend, and was one of, if not the, best goaltenders to ever suit up for Team USA. It's why if you take a look at Ryan Miller and the resume he has built up for himself, there are awards after awards after awards all over the place throughout his career. One of them was the Hobie Baker Award, which he won in 2000-2001 as a member of the Michigan State University NCAA Hockey Club, where in 40 games played, he went 31-5-4. He had a 950 save percentage and a 132 goals against average. Now, these numbers are phenomenal right here. You cannot stress just how good these numbers are. Since the year 2000, there are only four other goaltenders who have had better numbers than Ryan Miller this season, which was good enough to net him the Hobie Baker Award for the NCAA's best player. And we're going to be talking about one of them in this video. You see, I bring up Ryan Miller and the entire body of work that he has had, all the awards and the Vesnas and the Hobie Bakers and the Olympics and all this stuff, because I want to establish just how good Ryan Miller was. 
Because now, when you take a look at the Buffalo Sabres and their goaltending pipeline, you look at him and you see a guy that is going out there and besting out Miller. We're talking about him here today once more, Devin Levi. Now that Attack on Titan, the final season, is already up and airing, I think it's appropriate to go out there and make this video. Let's talk about Levi here, ladies and gentlemen, and try to defeat the Beast Titan. Devin Levi, as we have spoken about in previous videos, was not a Buffalo Sabres drafted prospect. He was drafted in 2027th round by the Florida Panthers, and... After a showcase which saw him put up a very good set of numbers for Team Canada at the World Juniors in 2021, you had yourselves a trade which saw Sam Reinhardt get sent over to Florida from Buffalo. It's not even Reinhardt, it's the signing rights to Reinhardt, and Levi came back in return. This season, though, in the NCAA, Devin Levi, in the 20-game sample he has had so far, is, uh, yeah, he's 15-4-1. Okay, that's a, that's a really good record right there. He's got a 119 goals against average and a 958 save percentage with eight shutouts. Now, what exactly happened to give him this set of numbers? Hey, Devin Levi on the weekend, not the weekend as in Don FM, but like the weekend, the weekend, January 7th, January 8th, back to back games for the Northeastern University Huskies against the Long Island University Sharks. Devin Levi played both of them. Devin Levi shut out both of them. He gets two shutouts in the span of 23 hours and 22 minutes. And these shutouts, one nothing. Two days ago, 6 nothing. yesterday, he makes himself a grand total of, how many saves is that in total? 44 saves over the span of the two games. He stops all the shots coming his way, and now the numbers kind of tell the whole story right here. Devin Levi and his 958 save percentage is the highest save percentage in NCAA history. At least in the modern era, there are some guys over here listed in the 30s and the 80s that have just kind of wacky numbers. Like, how do you get a 992 save percentage and a 369 goals against? Like, that doesn't even seem realistic at all. But just for the sake of keeping things in the realm of the now, Devin Levi is the best goaltender the NCAA has seen, if you don't want to say since the gosh darn 80s, since the 30s. There. And if not since the 30s, all time. So yeah, top save percentage, only bested by one in the past, like, 90 years in the NCAA, and his goals against average is kind of in that conversation, too. It's tied with Jimmy Howard, so it's just outside the top five. There are a few other guys that are going out there with better goals against averages, like Yaniv Perez, who has an 087. How in the heck is that even possible? Either way, Devin Levi is going out there and putting up numbers that Go out there and rival the last Hobie Baker goaltender winner, who was that Ryan Miller in 2001, who had that 950 and a 133 goals against. Devin Levi, as a sophomore, also 20 years old, is significantly better. The record for NCAA shutouts in a season is 12. Devin Levi has 8. Imagine that. The guy's gone out there and only played 20 games. He's got 8 shutouts. And with however many games remaining, like 16, he only needs four shutouts left to tie the NCAA record of shutouts in a season for one goalie. And it's kind of funny because, like, if you told anybody else, if you had a conversation about any other goalie, the expectation or just the bare minimum conversation template of saying, okay, the guy's got 16 games left, he needs to get four shutouts to do this record and break it. That's so willy-nilly, like, how could you go out there and expect any goalie to get four shutouts in 16 games? But with Devin Levi and the season he has had with Northeastern this year, that conversation is possible. That conversation is not even really all that bad, because he's had more shutouts than what he would need to get, proportionally speaking, to get the NCAA record of shutouts in a season. I mean, eight shutouts and 20 games played, that's like just under half the amount of games that he has are shutouts. That's not even just wins, that's shutouts, pure shutouts. Like, it's just kind of mind-boggling to me how good Devin Levi is. We made the previous video on this channel discussing him and Ryan Miller and Ken Dryden and Jimmy Howard, but like, now it's getting personal. Now he's going for that Hobie Baker. Now his performance is good enough to the point where if he does pull this off and he does get that record and he does win that award, I mean, the last guy to do it was Ryan Miller, right? So 
Buffalo fans, I think y'all should be pretty happy. Talk to me in the comments, though. What do you think about this entire conversation here? Devin Levi and his performance for the Huskies this season. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishra Shrolas 99. And bye. <laughs>